Yo guys, what is good? Welcome back on the Uncle Sharma channel. We are back for a scout report on what seems to be an imminent signing for Inter as confirmed, reported by Sky Sport Italia, Romano, Nico Schira and all other big sources when it comes to transfers. And you know which one I'm talking about. Oh, Canada, Asian Buchanan. This is actually a transfer that's been brewing in the background for over a year. Exactly last year at this time, I was invited on JJD TV and we discussed the rumours of Tejan Buchanan linked to Serie A teams and which team would fit Tejan Buchanan best. And guess what? Guess which team both Josh and I picked as the best fit for Tejan Buchanan? Inter Milan. And here we are, a year later, and it looks like this transfer actually may be coming true. And at that time, the reasoning behind why we chose Inter as the best team for Buchanan was related to the belief that even though Buchanan primarily played as a winger for most of his career, both the Josh and I believed that his true potential will be achieved as a wing back. Back then, we also mentioned that the move would be linked to Denzel Dumfries being sold. And lo and behold, the reports at the moment are talking about Inter and Denzel Dumfries struggling to come to an agreement for a contract renewal, his contract which expires in 2025. Therefore, in my opinion now, Beppe Marotta, Inter CEO, and Piero Zilio, the sporting director, are trying to hit two birds with one stone with this transfer. First of all, he's an instant replacement for Juan Cuadrado, who was a free transfer from Juve in the summer. He only came in with a one-year contract anyway, but it looks like he might be out for the rest of the season or most of the remainder of the season with his injury. So this would be an instant replacement for Cuadrado. Secondly, Inter would be positioning themselves in a position of strength in the aforementioned contract negotiation with Dumfries. Uh, by adding the potential long-term replacement there already. Remember, this is exactly what Inter did with Perisic when his contract was expiring. A couple of years ago, Inter signed Robin Gorsens from Atalanta for around 25 million euros, even though Perisic was having the season of his life. So uh, it smells like a Beppe Marotta typical move. But even though it's a typical Beppe Marotta move, this is definitely a Piero Auxilio signing. You know, a not so well-known player from one of the lower rated leagues in Europe over the years in this wing-back position. Piero has maybe had a few misses in terms of Lazzaro and Dalbert, but we've been scouting this boy for over a year, so they must be seeing something special in this boy. So let's talk about this boy, Tejon. Who is Tejon? So he's a 24 year old Canadian born in Brampton. Brampton, because you can't afford to live in Toronto. Big up Brampton, Ontario, Canada. Uh, he was born to Jamaican parents. He started playing football at five years of age, honed his skills in local leagues before joining Brampton United. Then he played college ball for Syracuse University, tearing up the ACC and then earning MLS attention. And now these days, he's a Canada international with 35 caps and four goals to his name. In terms of transfers, in 2019, he was drafted by the New England Revolution in the MLS Super Draft. And then in 2022, after an initial loan spell back at New England, he makes his 4 million euro move to Club Bruges in Belgium and immediately becomes a key player for the Belgian team. In 2022, of course, he also caught the eye at the Qatar World Cup, where he was one of the most eye-catching players for that young Canada team and earned interest from clubs around Europe, including Inter, thanks to his direct and quick style of play. So let's talk about position. What position does he play in? Well, as I mentioned before, primarily throughout his, most of his career, he's played as a winger, whether that's on the left or on the right. But as you can see up on the graphic on the screen, since his move to Belgium, he slowly started to be deployed a little bit more deep, more and more as a wing back or even as a full back. In this current season at Club Bruges, actually, he's played pretty much only as a right back in a back four, of course, with lots of license to get forward. And obviously at Inter, he would come in as the right wing back, although I wouldn't rule him out completely playing on the left wing back as well at, at some points, because as we can see from the heat maps, he's comfortable playing on both wings and his left foot isn't completely useless. And you can see once again over the heat map, you can see progressively he's kind of moved deeper over the years and focus more towards the right hand side of the pitch. Now let's move on to the stats of part of the scout report. This is always an interesting part. Uh, I have to admit again, when you do these scout reports, I always outline which players I've watched a lot of, which player I haven't. Tejan Buchanan is not a player I've watched a lot of. The only times I've caught him on full games are Club Bruges games in the Champions League. So everything must be taken with a pinch of salt here. I'm not a Buchanan expert. So what is he good at? Of 
course, his main attributes are his speed and dribbling ability. He's not Ashraf Hakimi, but he has an impressive burst of speed, especially after the first few meters. And you can see he loves dribbling. He loves taking on his man. And according to FB Ref, this season he has attempted 3.59 dribbles per 90 and also averages 4.25 carries and 1.2 carries into the penalty area. Great ability to have, and this is also a unique ability that Inter have lacked from the wing backs, especially since Perisic left, would be a good addition in terms of that. When you watch him, you can see he has those kind of Perisic style, Quadrado style step overs on lock. He loves that, you know, step over and boom, he goes off, but he gets that quick half a yard of pace manages to find that yard to squeeze across in. Uh, another thing I like about him is that he, look, he likes to come inside a lot. He's the one trick pony that always tries to force it onto his strong right foot. Uh, um, you don't know which way he's going, so he gives the, the opposition some trouble um, and opens up avenues for, for your own team as well. However, at the same time, within his strength, you also see a bit of a weakness. Uh, his dribbling is not efficient at all. I mean, here in the stat from this season, comparing him to other fullbacks in the top five leagues in Europe, it shows a 23% dribble completion, which is literally in the bottom 1% compared to other fullbacks. Okay, so mentality-wise, it shows resilience. This guy keeps going again, again, and again at his opponent. But to me, it also shows weak decision-making that um, he doesn't know when or how to dribble his opponent. His decision-making hasn't quite developed to that stage yet. That's something that clearly still needs to be developed and coached. We're talking about a 24-year-old player here, you know, by Italian standards, yeah, Serie A standards, he's a, he's a young player, but, you know, 24, in reality, should be hitting his peak soon. So that's a little bit of a worrying stat. And his output numbers over his career have never been particularly that outstanding either, which is probably why he has been moved back towards a, a deeper position. Uh, this season, his, his output at the moment stands at three goals and four assists in form 1,400 minutes, which isn't too shabby. He's averaging a goal contribution every 200 minutes. But honestly, personally speaking, you know, all due respect to the Belgian league, I would expect more from him in that league. And at the same time, about Club Bruges, it must be said, they're not as good as they have been over the last few years. So that also is a little bit of a potential explanation for his numbers. Goal creating action. Actually, he's not doing too shabby in that in the department. As you can see in goal creation, he's an added asset when it comes to creating shots from his dribbling, 0.29 per 90. And he's averaging 0.41 goal creating actions per 90 as well. Very key is that his foul winning ability is great. 2.43 fouls one per 90, which is a very high number. And he keeps going, as we said, he keeps going at the opposition. Even if he has been chopped down repeatedly, he just keeps going. You know, since we've added Taram to this team, the amount of penalties we started to win this season Inter, adding another player like that would be interesting. What is the bad at? Let's talk about that now. Well, obviously, he's a flary winger who's recently converted into a wingback slash fullback. It's obvious that his defensive now isn't really up to par. The numbers back that up, as you can see, all round. Tackles, tackles won, challenges lost, interceptions, shots blocked. All of these stats are not pointing to a natural defender or even a good defender at the moment. And moving to Serie A without being stereotypical, and if he is to play under Simone Inzaghi, we saw that with Raul Bellanova, who had you know a lot of growing to do in that category uh, last year under Inzaghi. Buchanan's gonna have to do the same. He's gonna have to improve a lot, especially on this defensive aspect to his game, which includes the tactical side of things too. First, he has to make the mental switch as well. He has to start enjoying defending, which I don't think at the moment from his body language and the way Buchanan defends that I don't get the feel that he enjoys defending. To him, it probably feels like a downgrade. You know, he started off as a winger um, and now he's been slowly moved to more and more defensive position. It probably feels like a downgrade, but in reality, he should see this as an opportunity to become a more complete player. He needs to make that mental switch like other players in the past have. Like we already mentioned the kinds of Perisic, Cuadrado, or Inter who both were uh, you know, attacking wingers in their past, uh, in the past life, but they made that switch. But even other examples outside of Inter, of the likes of Victor Moses, well, he's also linked to Inter, uh, Ashley Young, oh, oh wait, yeah, he's also linked to Inter. The athletic raw material is definitely there for him to be a good, you know, up and down wing back. You know, he's got the, he's got the pace, he's got the stamina, he's got decent strength as well. He needs to put the work to get those raw attributes to work in a defensive aspect. Moving on to passing, his passing numbers also don't look too great. Uh, although this isn't necessarily a key attribute for a wing back, it would help him and Inzaghi's Inter immensely if he was able to retain the ball better 
and be able to contribute to Inter's intricate build-up play, unlike Dumfries who was told to stay as far away as possible from Inter's build-up. And this also leads to his final ball, as we saw in his stats, his, his assist numbers aren't, you know, anything to shout about. Crossing at the moment seems very erratic. This is another aspect to, to polish considerably. Uh, his decision-making, his cross-selection, uh, because clearly he, he's got the ability to get the cross in, um, but he needs to make the right decision when he gets into those positions, and that's another aspect that whoever coaches him will have to work on. So overall, final verdict. The reported transfer fee for Tejon Buchanan is, at the moment, reported to be around 10 million, and some uh, outlets are even saying even less than that, which to me sounds like fantastic value for money for a 24-year-old, Canada international with international experience, also Champions League and Europa League experience. However, if this transfer does happen, I'm not expecting any immediate impact if he does come to Inter because Pavard has recently come back from injury. Bisek and Darmian, Bisek especially, have both shown that, you know, the right-hand side probably is going to be fine even with injuries. So I struggled to see Tejon really getting minutes this season in the first six months uh, at Inter. Aside from maybe being thrown on as a super sub, you know, with his dribbling and directness to if Inter need to, to score some goals or create some chances to be thrown on like that. I think the initial six months would be a settling in period for him uh, where he will have to work in and off the pitch to acclimatise himself, learn the language, learn the Inzaghi system, improve his tactical understanding of the game and refine also his attacking side of the game. But if Dumfries is sold in the summer, he doesn't you renew his contract. The next season, I think, is where we will be able to judge Buchanan properly after he's had his initial settling in period. And he probably will have those opportunities to become a starter at Inter. I'll be honest, overall, I don't have really high expectations of this transfer. I, I don't think he is going to be starting material for Inter. The low-hanging fruit comparison to Valentin Lazzaro is right there. You know, that kind of flary winger who converted into a wing back and it hasn't quite worked out but i must admit player profile is intriguing he is someone who's interesting to watch he's going to add a bit of excitement uh in terms of his uh pace and dribbling ability and honestly I'm, I'm rooting for him to succeed you know he's a young canadian guy from brampton i know a lot of canadian interisti relate to him a lot it would be amazing for them to watch uh, a player from that side of the world play for Inter so he's definitely going to have my backing and we've been clearly scouting this boy for over a year as I said before so clearly he has the buy-in from you know the scout department the management in Zaghi most importantly so I'm willing to put in my faith in Simone and Zaghi's coaching and put faith in a young hungry boy like Tejan Buchanan who maybe wants to make a name for himself in Serie A at Inter and hopefully he won't be the next uh, Lazaro slash uh, Dalbert what do you guys think? You guys let me know down in the comments down below what you think of this potential signing from Inter. Tejon Buchanan, is he going to be a flop like Lazaro, Dalbert, etc.? Or is he going to be a decent backup? Or is he going to be the future starting right wing back at Inter? You guys let me know in the comments down below. Hope you guys enjoyed this scout report. Please, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Hope you appreciate the effort put into this video. And I'll see you for the next one. Ciao ragazzi. Always, always. Porta Inter.